The recent affiliation of a factional group in the All Progressive Congress APC, Lagos for Lagos Movement, with the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has been greeted with criticism. The Lagos for Lagos group, led by Olajide Adediron, had announced its decision to join the People's Democratic Party in the state over irreconcilable differences. Now, reacting, the APC Publicity Secretary Shea Oladijo uh, stated that it was the constitutional right of the leaders of, and members of the group to associate themselves with any party of their choice without sparing a thought for morals, principles, antecedents, perennial history of political defeats, and inconsistency in their selling point. Meanwhile, Adediron stated that the decision to join the People's Democratic Party was birthed out of a need to choose between subjecting the aspirations to make Lagos work for all as against subjecting it to the mood of an individual. What's running us to discuss this is Shegun uh, Basharun. Thank you very much, Mr. Basharun, for joining us. So I'm, I'm going to start by asking you again, because, I mean, Jidea Dediro is not here, um, but I yeah. would like to find out why Lagos for Lagos, um, which seemed to be a very vocal part of the All Progressive Congress, decided to dump the APC for the PDP. Oh, yes. Um, you know, first and foremost, you have to understand that the political space in Nigeria has been deliberately been shrinking uh, by the political godfathers uh, for each successive election period. For, so every four years, you find out that the space for newcomers, the space for, uh, for the average Nigerian to participate or to contest is shrinking. So you see that the, um, it's only the godfathers, the former governors, for those who have been in the system and the party that are allowed to reshuffle themselves and so we, we, keep, we keep having the same of the same for all of, of these years. So what Dr. Abdulaziz, Olajide uh, Adedino, you know, had done with the Lagos for Lagos movement is to start a movement, a political movement, in which a newcomer can go to Lagosians and tell Lagosians, for, for instance, in Lagos, that's what we're doing in Lagos for Lagos, we've started a movement and tell Lagosians that, listen, if we're going to join the political party, and actualize, I mean, and try to actualize our dream of a Lagos for Lagosians, so that Lagosians can decide for themselves what is best for Lagos. If we're going to do that in a political party, no political party will allow us to give us a platform to do that. Hmm. But we're going to start a movement, a political movement, in which if we have a sizable number of people in a political party using a platform, which APC was the platform we wanted to test to see, that we can use this with our movement and bring about changes so we can force the Godfathers in our party to say that this is the voice of reason, that we have the majority and the majority of Lagosians and party members are telling you this is the direction we want to go. So yeah, we but I'm, I'm more curious. I'm sorry to speak to over you. Can I just come in quickly? Um, you, made, yes, you made an express um, decision to create a platform that would grow the number of young people that would be able to make a change in political parties. And you started with the APC. So why take those people in that political party to another political party if this is your exactly. plan to spread in different political parties? If you really Thank sincerely... You. Hold on, let me get to the Thank point. If you, you really sincerely wanted to um, get more people into political parties, why didn't you stay in the APC and then decide to start another movement within the PDP? It doesn't work like that. You see, first and foremost, our party, APC, is dying. If you don't know that, I'm giving you express information. Because the crisis within the party has consistently been growing over the years. And there has been consistent warning that if this crisis are not resolved, the party would implode from within. Now, you, you are well aware that we have followed all the processes, all the democratic processes within the party to ensure that we tell our party to toe the line of, uh, of democracy because it is within the party system that we can train ourselves to behave democratically before we go out to govern the nation. So what we do within our political system is what we do in a magnified way when we get to power. So what we have done within APC was to try and teach them how to be democratic, democratic, and we followed that process, and then we saw 
that the infighting, the, the, the inconsistency of, of taking the shortcut and telling people to go to peace. And you saw what happened, and remember what happened with Oshomale, who when he was the national chairman and, and, and in those states. So we did all of these things to make sure we followed all due process within the party. Now, we now saw, we made the decision that if this party is not able to decide when to have a convention to resolve many of the problems we've had, that everybody is going to sink with this APC. I'm still now, pretty, cu I'm know, still pretty curious, sorry, um, I'm still pretty curious as to why this movement that you have made reference to was not an apolitical movement. That way, you can push these people into the different political parties because this seems like something that the person started for personal ambition. No, 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 I understand. I totally understand. Just hold on. Just hold Hold your thought. Just hold on. I totally... Just hold on. I'm going to tell you why I'm asking that. Um... I understand what Lagos for Lagos is for, but I'm saying, because you're saying you try to teach and the journey to bringing about any change whatsoever, it's not something that can be done immediately. So you will definitely get pushbacks. And if you did get a pushback, as you have said in the APC, why run away to the PDP? Does the PDP yeah, not have the journey. same kinds of problems in the, uh, as the APC? We've been on this journey for almost six years, if you understand. We've been on this journey for almost six years that we've been building this platform. Now, if you're going to build a political movement, you need a political party, according to INEC, in which to fight, right? Now, if you're going to be in a movement and you want to bring about changes in your country, you have to contest, you have to fight for position and contest to bring about the changes you have desire for. Now, you're not telling me to tell people in APC or our leader in APC that this is what they should do. What we have done within our movement is we are telling Lagosians because we are tired of the same of the same. We have been in this struggle and we realize that we have been uh, um, given the pushback that we can go to a bit. And that is not going to work. But I'm not going to go personal. What I want to say is Lagos for Lagos is a movement. It's a political movement that needs to use the political platform to actualize its dream now. That is why we call it, it is time, and 2023 is the time for us to actualize that dream. And we have told Lagosian that Lagos for Lagos is not a police, it's not an APC platform. It's not a PDP platform. It's a platform of all political parties and all well wishers of change in Lagos. That we want Lagosians to take Lagos away from the hands of a few that make decisions okay. unwisely for us. So what we are doing and the decision to go to, to PDP was to choose a better platform that we can use to actualize. And PDP invited us and said, we like what you're doing at the moment. And you've been okay. following what PDP has been doing. Okay, PDP, you, you, you just, goes, keep, you just answered... So let, me, let, me, let, me, let me make this clear, please. Okay. The PDP goes out to go and poach people everywhere. The PDP does the same thing. What PDP did here was to see what in Lagos for Lagos movement has been doing. That this is consistency. They can see the following. They can see the crowd. And they have told us that if you come to PDP, we will assist to ensure that you get the ticket in our party. So what we are doing is, the certain individuals have invited us and say, hey, you're not going to get a ticket in PDP, in APC, because your party is not democratic, and your party is sinking, which is not a secret, which we know, we are insiders in our party. We know okay. there's a problem with the party. So when they invited us, so we sat down, and we asked our members, our members, what do you think? And members overwhelmingly decided that we have to use the platform, and knowingly, that PDP is far more democratic. I mean, I'm not trying to defend anybody here. We know political parties in Nigeria is not ideologically based. So we have to form a movement of ideology within our Lagos for Lagos movement. That ideology that stands for the massive participation in the process okay. to make decisions for us. So that's what we do in the movement. So we're using a platform of the PDP. Which okay. We have gracefully All right. invited us and we have accepted a like to... far better choice than APC. Because we don't have too much time, I'd like to quickly refer to something that the APC spokesman, Oladejo, uh, said um, when he was responding to the move from the APC to the PDP. He said that the members of your movement were perpetually ungovernable. He also said that they, you leave by a certain set of rules and regulations and you do not want to heed to any other person's rules and regulations, being that... If you are in a party, even in the PDP, they will have a modus operandi. They will have certain do's and don'ts. 
is it safe to say that um, you people were disruptors in the party and now you're taking the same um, movement to the PDP? What's the guarantee that you would be allowed the same kind of, um, or the, rather the platform that you're looking for? It's very beautiful. Political parties are opening their doors because it's almost campaign season. But yeah, then again, the party, yeah. the party spokesperson is alleging that Jidi Adediran is angling to run for governor. And that's why he's rushing to the PDP to see if he can get a ticket. But is, is the PDP also not having people who are interested in running for the governorship on that platform? You see, you see, you see we are Democrats. We've said it clearly. Nobody, you see, what PDP does that is different from ABC, they actually do primaries. They allow people to contest. And, and what Dr. Uh, Abdulaziz Dolajide Adedino has said consistently to PDP members and leadership is, I am not coming here for special favors. I have actually, he said, he has called other contestants to tell, to inform them that I am coming to join your party. That I, uh, uh, Dr. Abdulaziz Dolajide Adedino, that I'm coming, he called Gomez, he called other contestants and said, I am coming to your party. So this is what the Democrats will do, and it made, and made clear to them that when I come to your party, I want us to unite to take Lagos. That is the primary goal that we must understand. So we need to unite and see which, who is best out of us, who is best suited. How do we put our resources together to take Lagos? That's primary. So there's no, there's no, um, um, uh, there's no privilege or, or, or preferences to anybody here. It's going to be a democratic process, one. Okay. Then secondly, you have to remember, People, what uh, this APC spokesperson is talking about, you, can, you can't listen to people like that. Because what has happened is that the institution that we are trying to build, the democratic institution that we need in Nigeria, that teaches politicians how to behave and how the kind of what, what the rule of law, the paramount of what the rule of law, that we must always follow our own guidelines and rules. That is what we are missing here. So what has happened in APC is that we have godfathers that had appointed him, that is speaking, the spokesperson, was appointed. He never went through contestation. Nobody voted for him to be the spokesperson. I was voted for to be a spokesperson of my movement. He was written, okay. his name was written by his godfather. So the problem in Nigeria is wherever godfather exists, institution would not we, exist. Well, we because have the to purpose go. of this institution, wait, wait, the purpose of political institution is to make sure that no individual will be powerful enough okay. to decide for the populace. So, the reason why they, are, they love their APC and their Lagos Godfather is because they don't, they hate institutions, which we we're are out of time. Build. We're out of time, Mr. Basharu. We are institutions that will take Lagosians to the next level. Well, we wish you the best of luck uh, in the Pe People's Democratic Party. We would be following uh, your activities. But thank you very much, Basharu, for speaking with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. The PDP is party to beat. All right. uh, we are going to win the election. Well, we, did, well, we, we so cannot PM the elections, elections until election day, but thank you so much for speaking with us. We have yeah. to go now. Well, thank you everyone for being part of the conversation tonight. We'll leave you with the highlight of the week and the conversations we've had on Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening. Whistle blame is all about giving information secretly, surreptitiously to the establishment for them to carry out certain actions. Information that will help the economy. For example, you have a criminal, you have uh, an armed robber, or you have um, uh, a, a, a permanent secretary or an auditor general, or somebody is committing some sort of fraud in the ministry. You go and disclose to the authorities so that they investigate. That's what you're talking about. That's why I say you don't just take the information hook, line, and sinker. You know, because what if that information is a function of law? See, what if the, 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 the informant laughs or reviles the victim and will just come up to say, this man, just because he's his political enemy, or just because he took his girlfriend, or just because he slept with his wife, will now say this man is involved in this. I know so many cases like that, that this man is involved in this, and in actual fact, the man is innocent. And if you have such an informant that dispenses mendacity, then that informant himself, and that's why every whistleblower, the uh, operators must ensure that they know the houses, they know them to their houses. 
if you come and give me any information, you must show me where you reside, your office or something. I must trace you to something, your village, everything. So that if that information is questionable, I will come back for you. And that will very likely thing will discourage the sensation of falsehood. Where there is a right, there is obligation. And because there is a right, because there is a, a right and obligation, there is also a, a benefit. And if there is a benefit, there must also be sanction in the context it's that the, when the whistleblower is found to be culpable, what, what happens to him? Because based on that information that is abused, the, 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 uh, uh, the magistrate takes an action. And of course, in order to be able to issue the warrant, the law is section 35, section 36, section 37, section 38 of uh, what they call it, the uh, part three of uh, uh, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. The magistrate will not just act in the back, will not act in the The magistrate is expected to know the facts. The magistrate is expected to be furnished with who you are going to arrest, the magistrate is expected to be furnished with that information regarding the identity, the location, and whatsoever. Yeah, because we are we are in a country where people in authority disregard the law. The the people in authority doesn't uh, bother about what the law says. They only bother about what they want to do and what they think they should do. Because uh, the issue of uh, autonomy has been in the country since 2010 or so, and I don't know why it's not being implemented to date. In fact, to the extent that the president even make an uh, executive order, a superfluous, superfluous order, uh, in, 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 in trying to enforce the, the provision of the constitution, yet we have not, we have not had anything about it. So uh, I think uh, it's, it's, it's a confirmation of the kind of country we are. We are in a country where we don't care about law, and as well as those in authority. They, they ignore the law when it does not suit them, and they follow the law when it suits them. I don't know the reason why uh, our government have failed to name and shame uh, these criminal elements here uh, in Nigeria. Uh, terrorism has been striving, just like uh, Ambrose said, you know, it's, it's as if it has become a, a good business uh, here in Nigeria. But for me, I, I will hold the uh, Nigerian intelligence uh, network uh, accountable uh, because uh, we cannot have an effective intelligence uh, mechanism in Nigeria and we still have this criminal and uh, this sponsor of, or sponsors of terrorism excelling with the confines of our country. It's a failure on, on intelligence, uh, from the directorate of military intelligence and other intelligence network that are supposed to uh, stage a sting operation against uh, these uh, conflict entrepreneurs uh, that are benefiting for the uh, security situation uh, in Nigeria, you know? So what I would advise the federal government to do is to start naming and shaming those that uh, they've arrested. The federal government has what we call the legitimate instrument of terror. The constitution has given it to the federal government. The federal government is in charge of the police. The federal government is in charge of the DMI, the NIA, the Navy, the Army, the police. They are in charge of the custom, the officers of the correctional centers. So the civil defense. So all the apparatus of the security are under the exclusive lead, under the federal government. But our constitution, cheekily, in a very cheeky manner, said that the chief security officer of the state is the governor. But the governor does, the commissioner of police does not receive instruction from the governor. The GOC is ahead of your GOC, your command brigades do not receive instructions. The director of SSS or directors of other military agencies or paramilitary agencies do not receive instruction from the governor. So the governor is helpless in most of the time. You know, he can only do with local vigilantes and some other things he can, you know, cook up in his state.